Have you ever wondered about the origins of the mysterious figure of Enoch, the man who walked with God and never died? Who was he, and what did he see and learn in his heavenly journeys? How did his writings influence the beliefs and practices of ancient Jews, Christians, and other groups? And why was his book rejected by the mainstream churches and preserved only by the fringes of society? In this video, we will explore the fascinating world of Enoch, the seventh patriarch in the book of Genesis, whose story has survived through centuries, crossing the boundaries of cultures and religions. We will discover how Enoch was not just a man of great piety, but also a visionary who received secret knowledge from God, a sage who taught wisdom and ethics, a prophet who foretold the future, and a mediator who interceded for humanity. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos on the hidden and forgotten aspects of the history of religion. Who was Enoch? Enoch was the son of Jared and the father of Methuselah, the oldest man in the Bible. He was the seventh generation from Adam, the first human being created by God. According to the book of Genesis, chapter 5, verses 21 to 24, this is what the Bible says about him. Enoch lived 65 years and begot Methuselah. After he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. So all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. This brief and cryptic passage raises many questions. What does it mean to walk with God? How did Enoch manage to live such a long life? And what happened to him after God took him? Did he die, or did he ascend to heaven? The Bible does not give us any more details about Enoch, but his name and story appear in many other ancient sources, both Jewish and Christian, that try to fill in the gaps and expand on his biography and achievements. These sources are known as the Enochic literature, and they include several books that claim to be written by or about Enoch. The most important and influential of these books is the first book of Enoch, or I Enoch, which we will focus on in this video. Why is the first book of Enoch important? The first book of Enoch is important for many reasons, both historical and theological. It is one of the earliest and most influential examples of Jewish apocalyptic literature that shaped the worldview and the expectations of many Jews and Christians in the Second Temple period and beyond. It is also one of the most rich and original sources of information and speculation about the topics that fascinated and troubled the ancient people, such as the origin and nature of evil, the role and fate of the angels, the structure and secrets of the cosmos, the judgment and resurrection of the dead, and the coming of the Messiah. The first book of Enoch is also important because it has left a significant mark on the biblical and extra-biblical literature, both in terms of content and style. Many of the ideas and the images that we find in the book of Enoch are echoed and elaborated in other books, such as the book of Daniel, the book of Jubilees, the book of Revelation, the Gospel of Matthew, the Epistle of Jude, the Second Epistle of Peter, and the Epistle to the Hebrews. Some of these books even quote or refer to the Book of Enoch as a sacred and authoritative source, showing the high esteem and the popularity that it enjoyed among some circles of Jews and Christians. For example, in the Epistle of Jude, verse 14, we read, It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness, that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This is a direct quotation from the first book of Enoch, chapter 1, verse 9, which is part of the book of the Watchers. Jude also mentions the story of the fallen angels, who left their proper dwelling and are kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day, the verse 6. This is a clear reference to the same story that we find in the Book of the Watchers, chapters 6 to 16. Another example is the second epistle of Peter, chapter 2, verses 4 to 5, where we read, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, this is also a clear reference to the story of the fallen angels and the flood that we find in the Book of the Watchers. Moreover, the word that Peter uses for Hele in Greek is Tartarus, which is the name of the deepest and darkest part of the underworld in Greek mythology, where the Titans, the enemies of the gods, were imprisoned. This word is also used in the Book of the Watchers, chapter 20, verse 2, 
where Uriel shows Enoch the place where the fallen angels are bound until the day of their judgment. This shows that Peter was familiar with the Book of the Watchers, and that he used its terminology and imagery to make his point. These are just two examples of the many connections and influences that the first Book of Enoch has on the biblical and extra-biblical literature. There are many more that we could explore, but we will leave them for another video. For now, we will focus on the main themes and messages that the Book of Enoch conveys, and how they relate to our own questions and challenges today. What are the main themes and messages of the first Book of Enoch? The first Book of Enoch is a book that deals with some of the most profound and universal themes and questions that humans have ever asked, such as, where do we come from, and where are we going? What is the meaning and purpose of our existence? What is the origin and nature of evil? And how can we overcome it? What is the role and destiny of the angels? And how do they interact with us? What is the structure and secrets of the cosmos? And how can we understand it? What is the judgment and resurrection of the dead? And what will happen to us after we die? What is the coming of the Messiah? And what will he do for us and for the world? These are not easy questions to answer, and the Book of Enoch does not pretend to have the final and definitive answers to them. Rather, it offers a variety of perspectives and insights that reflect the diversity and the complexity of the human condition and the divine plan. The Book of Enoch also challenges us to think critically and creatively, and to question the assumptions and the traditions that we take for granted. It warns us of the dangers and the consequences of ignorance and arrogance, of disobedience and rebellion, of violence and corruption, that have plagued the human race since the beginning of time. It also gives us hope and comfort, by reminding us of the grace and the mercy, of the love and the faithfulness, of the power and the glory, that belong to God, and that He has shown and will show to His people. Who trust and follow him. The Book of Enoch is a book that speaks to us today, as it spoke to the people of yesterday, and as it will speak to the people of tomorrow. It is a book that transcends the boundaries of time and space, of culture and religion, of history and prophecy. It is a book that belongs to all of us, who are the children of Enoch, the seventh patriarch, the man who walked with God and who never died. This is the end of our journey into the mystical world of Enoch, the secrets of the seventh patriarch. I hope you found it interesting and informative, and that it sparked your curiosity and imagination. And if you like this video, please show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to our channel, where we explore the hidden and forgotten aspects of the history of religion. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.